Like Bernie Sanders being angry was actually really good because people are angry, right? Because when politicians adopt the opposite stance, when they don't channel the frustrations and anger that people feel, then they come across like phonies. Okay, let's look at this Trump rally and see uh, what happened there because uh, a friend of the show, friends of the show, more perfect union, went to the Trump rally and uh, what they heard will shock you. This has 1.3 million views. How wonderful. We'll all agree communism doesn't work. Yeah. But extreme capitalism, as we're seeing right now, does not with work. this corporate capitalism, also has its problems. How much money is too much money? For not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. But, of course... Those guys are all going to vote for Donald Trump or whoever the Republican candidate is, okay? I need you guys to understand something. You will probably see a dude in the crowd that will tell you, honestly, I think collective ownership uh, over our, our, uh, you know, our factory is actually a really good idea. I really like it. And then you ask him another issue. Or you'll be like, well, that sounds like communism. You'll be like, fuck you. How dare you say that? That's communism is fascism. Okay? They have no idea. These guys do not vote on clear ideological boundaries. Americans do not vote on ideology. Okay? Approximately 20% of the American voters, which, by the way, already isn't uh, the, the plurality, usually. Okay? The plurality are eligible voters who do not vote. Remember. But out of the people who do vote, around 20% vote on ideological boundaries, 80% vote on party lines. That's it. Okay? That's it. They vote on party lines. Every American that you encounter, especially ones that are politically active enough to go to a rally, are going to give you some of the most insane political positions that will have you, uh, that will leave you shocked. They'll go, how are you... How are you at a Trump rally? Like, what are you saying? One person it, it's a tough call. I know. When they yeah, have these yeah. billions, you're like, well, they really don't need it. Yeah, we agree with that. Why Trump instead of Bernie Sanders? What I look at is more progressives like the Bernie Sanders faction and stuff like yeah. that. We actually see a lot of the same problems. And I would vote for a Bernie Sanders before I'd vote for like a Ted Cruz or a Marco Rubio. What would it have taken for you guys to, to not go into the rally and to instead get ice cream with me, a flaming leftist. Well, first of all, you'd I'd have be to happy. buy. I'm happy. <laughs> all right, I'm buying. We are polarized. There is no doubt about it. But I came to this Trump rally on a hunch. I've poured drinks at a Rust Belt dive bar for the last year, and when your county votes for Trump and the bartender looks like I do, people kind of assume that you're on the same page. But sometimes... This is the guy who... Uh also cooked, uh, uh, like, he's the one who did the Eli Lilly tweet. For those of you who don't know. Yeah, that's him. He's the one who did the, he's the one who did the Eli Lilly meme talking about, like, he, he made the fake Eli Lilly account. No, it's a different guy. No, this is him. No, this is him. Isn't it? Is that another mullet mustache guy that sounds exactly like this guy? I thought this was him. Wait, where do I know this guy from then? What have I seen him in? Am I crazy? Wait, let me see. Why does chat always do this where they're just like, nah, you're wrong, dude. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I, I wonder if I can find it. Is it a different guy? Hey. My name's Sean. Oh, and never mind. It I isn't him. Accidentally made national news with eight dollars. You're right. My bad. It doesn't even look like him at all. I probably saw him on a different thing. Um, they're both affiliated with More Perfect Union. This guy you saw the dive bar video. He was talking to conservatives about supporting unions and strikes. I think. Yeah, I, he covered the Ohio train derail derailment. Okay, maybe. Uh, that's what I, dude. Listen, my brain is not working. Okay chill i was super wrong this is the guy in the video where have i seen this guy before i don't know appalachian dive bar tender and eater of rich class politics the rednecks the hippies at the holler 
Oh, uh, you know what? I might have seen uh, I might have seen TikToks of him or something, and I thought that it was different. You were wrong this one time. I will continuously bring this up every single day now to counter everything you say again. Yeah. No, no, I think I've seen this guy's uh, TikToks before. Also, because I'm a... I guess that answers why chat always tells you that you're wrong. Yeah, chat, I'll give this to you. You got me. Here's his most viral TikTok. I talk left-wing politics in my small town bar with people mostly whose idea of a... I have not watched this before. I, I am unfamiliar with his work. I think I've seen something else. Anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter. This is irrelevant. Let's get to the... So I went to Erie, Pennsylvania to find out. Are we rolling? Okay. We're here at the Trump rally today. Why did you come out today? To support my 45th president. Okay. He didn't lose. He called out the Washington establishment, and I, that's, I absolutely loved it. You know, he's definitely not a Republican. Because like, the question is, okay, well, he, he was Washington establishment. He was president, right? So how do you, how do you square that circle? right how does that work but of course again a lot of this stuff is cool and makes leftists feel good and you know maybe i don't know i think i'm just such a fucking cynic dude i i i i'm so pessimistic about electoral prospects for like genuine real progressives now i i it just i don't know i i see stuff like this and i'm sorry this is it strikes me as really 2015 coded. Like the reason these folks can agree is that the networks they watch aren't engaging on the issues. Their identities are wrapped up with this MAGA bullshit. Oh, yeah, but like, one, there is not really a guy out there. Okay? There is not really a person out there who will, uh, you know, win these people over. And secondly, like these guys don't give a shit. You know what I mean? They... They're like, yeah, Trump did the populist messaging and we liked it and we, th we thought that he was different than whatever we had seen prior, right? And that was great. But also, they're still, they're lovers of Trump. You know what I mean? It, it, it very clearly, the last eight years did not change their mentality at all. They watched Donald Trump uh, give gigantic tax breaks to corporations and the wealthiest Americans and they still champion him. You know what I mean? It's not about genuine ideology. It's not about like a, a material difference that they will ever experience in their lives. And it's just a cult of personality. You know what I mean? Eight years have gone by and these guys still love Trump. What has Trump offered you? If you live in Erie, Pennsylvania, what has he offered you? Nothing. Nothing. Because Mitch McConnell and them would be backing them and DeSantis would be running against them. Yeah. Obviously not a Democrat no more. So right. we're more of a politically homeless faction that loves America and will make all the changes that we can to make it great. Prices are just higher. Like you go to the grocery store. Yeah. I buy the same thing every time I go to the grocery store. I spend $102 at Aldi's. I was just telling my uncle this. Yeah. I'm spending over 200 bucks now. Yeah. So Listen, brother. At the end of the fucking day, uh, you know, Bidenomics, Trumponomics... Top of the hour ad break is still three minutes long. $5 is still $5 to avoid it, okay? That hasn't changed unless you're on an iPhone, in which case Apple Store takes a, a cut, so it's $6 on your, on your phone if you want to subscribe. Here's your three-minute ad break now. What has Trump done for you? Wait, is this a... Achieve. That's like what you're saying right now. No, 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 no,
basically make you pay attention to some jingling keys, okay, while they just steal what remains of the social safety nets that were promised to you. Yeah, that's the main point I took away from this. These guys obviously don't care about fixing these issues they're talking about. So what's left for them to support Trump? Only culture war bullshit and racial agitation. Exactly. Exactly. And then you just like feel like Trump is on your side. That's it. Why is he on our side? Because he's made the libs mad. Why? Because the libs are the elites, right? The societal elites, the ones who have their fingers on the pulse, the ones who uh, have their hands on the levers that make my life awful. My life's awful. And libs are the ones uh, that are making it awful, actually, with their policies and the Mexicans that are coming over the border. These are the things that are, uh, these are the things that are destroying my life. Uh, oh my God! So things are more expensive. I think people are more scared. Our money doesn't have no value, and that's why people. That's why we're having problems. This whole inflation thing. It's been building and building for multi decades, and yeah. it's it's getting close now. You work at McDonald's, right? I do. Do you feel like? Uh, you're getting everything out of work that you're putting into it? I believe I should get paid more. All I am doing is I'm working my ass off to get my money. I'm a hard worker, and I feel like I deserve more. I work down in West Virginia. Yeah. Yep, on the rigs for Evil Big Red Halliburton. Yeah. Oh, my God. Halliburton, we were two weeks on, one week off, so you never got to go home. We were the lowest paid of all the workers out there. I only made thirteen fifty when I got hired on. For Halliburton. For Halliburton, yep. Probably wouldn't even have an Iraq war if it wouldn't have been for the Halliburton there's a, and there's a, Cheney and stuff. We were expendable. That's all it yeah. was. Halliburton, Big Red, they called it. You're just part of the machine and the machine can be replaced. As expendable as, you know, people who went over to fight a rich person's war in Iraq. Yep, pretty yeah. much. It, five years ago, I came to the realization that I... <laughs> I love chatters looking at these guys be like, he's a socialist. Like, no, man. No, in the absence of any real infrastructure that motivates these people to fucking vote on behalf of a particular party, in the absence of a political party that genuinely defines what their material interests are and actively works to better them, all of this conversation amounts to is, oh yeah, we got the same class interest, brother, but you have no class consciousness, okay? That's it. These guys are so close, yet so far. You're talking to a dude who literally said, oh, Halliburton, you know, that's why the Iraq war happened, right? Dick Cheney, right? And then turns around and votes for Trump. What if we're the bad guys here? Opinion by David Brooks. Oh, love David. Ain't Trump anti-war? Yeah, dude, he's super anti-war. Totally. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I've, I've been hoodwinked. I, I, I have zero respect for Dick Cheney. I have zero respect for George Bush. What, what did it uh, What did it for you there, and why did you end lie. up going towards Trump? It was a lie. And this they, might they lied stupid. about the Iraqi Iraq war. There were, you know, we got li there was no reason for to us to war. go into yeah. war in Iraq other than the military industrial complex it's just wanted theory, the war. Too, the, the global corporations do they have, you know, the Goldilocks question: too much, just enough, or too little power? Where do you Where would I you? I feel like place their only it? thought is more money, right? More power. That's all they. That's all you care. Whoever has but the most still, money. Obviously, it's so. it's too much. Yep. When so, you have a company like BlackRock that's worth nine trillion. Ask them why they hate BlackRock, and it won't be because it's worth nine trillion dollars. Which, by the way, so many. I can't believe I'm becoming one of these fucking guys who's like, actually, that's not what BlackRock does. But, but like, kind of. Uh, I think people genuinely misunderstand what BlackRock does, especially because like they think that BlackRock is, like, responsible for diversity initiatives or some shit, okay? Like, they, they hate it. Most, most of the time, they hate it because, like, Fox News told them that, like, they're, they're trying to make your children gay or they're trying to make the, the next uh, Disney movie gay or whatever. And it's frustrating. My mom thinks BlackRock is mostly pension and retirement funds, not private equity. Like... The, the level of control that BlackRock has over American corporations is not necessarily as, uh, as black and white as the way that they present it. It's just capitalism. It's more capitalism, okay? Blackstone is the private equity uh, that uh, a lot of people uh, fail to recognize. Like The distinction between Blackstone and BlackRock when they're talking about real estate and whatnot ultimately doesn't matter. They're all the same shit because they are all major... They're, they're all major corporations that are 
the same purveyors of, of capitalism. They either engage in private equity or asset management. It doesn't fucking matter. Ultimately, uh, ultimately, they're all operating on the same exact uh, boundaries and the same exact interests. It's finance capitalism. Okay? A good guide for chatters uh, for the different investment firms. BlackRock investment firm. Bridgerock investment firm. Bridgewater investment firm. Bridgestone are tires. Blackwater is a private mercenary army. Blackstone is an investment firm. Anyway, let's see trillion dollars. And Vanguard's what? Vanguard's eight yep. trillion dollars. Obviously, I'm not going to argue. Is there's a there's a problem with that? Do you think the the finance sector? Yeah. Does it have too much power? Just the right amount of power, not enough power. Way too much power. The financial sector. A hundred percent. Yes. Um, these people really. There a lot of these people they don't realize are unelected officials. So all these politicians have this plan for how they're going to fix the economy, but then they just get in there, they don't do anything, and they're funded by the people. And those yeah, Trump did a really, uh, Trump did a really awesome job, like uh, tackling BlackRock and and Vanguard or Blackstone. Remember when he did that? Remember when he when he said uh, he would uh, uh, he would tackle hedge funds uh, or or uh, the carried interest loophole or increase uh, the the capital gains tax. You know what I mean? Like, all the things that Trump said he was going to do, and he certainly did. Remember when all that happened? Except, no, he didn't do any of that shit. He lowered and made permanent the corporate tax rate and the highest marginal tax rate. He lowered and made permanent those two tax rates. The other tax rates that were lowered were sunsetting. They were always supposed to sunset, and they did. They've sunsetted now. So you didn't get shit. You got like $4 back at the end of the goddamn month and you thought, oh my God, Trump is doing something for me. He also fucking uh, increased the estate tax as well. Well, not increase, decrease the estate tax from like 15,000 Americans total to even less than that. Or no, it was uh, a number that was a little bit larger than that too. 15,000 total Americans. Those are the only people who are going to be able to uh, be hit with the estate tax. It's like, and it, it basically... Um, I mean, he ripped into the budget, basically, uh, of, of what funds the American government. It's incredibly stupid if you're a guy who worked on a fucking oil rig where you think, like, Trump did anything good for you, okay? He didn't do shit. He didn't build houses. You know what I mean? These people are not elected, and they control the people that are elected. What role do you think... Uh you know, the consolidation of these larger corporations. You know, I came from an agricultural background, and mm. now um, it'll be four, three or four companies that control the entire yeah. market for chicken, yeah. for yep. eggs, yep. for beef. That shouldn't for, happen. Yeah. The working class has gotten beaten up because of the loss of, of small businesses. And my question would be, well, I would say, well, why aren't they here anymore? As a small business owner, yeah. I feel like um, we aren't represented that much in America. Do you see a problem with that kind of operation? You oh, 100%. I mean? when it's, when it's because the big guys are beating out the small guys right. or even the family-owned businesses, you know, easily. A lot of that's driven by these really large corporations that are, you know, just by their size pushing the little guy out. Yes. How big of a problem do you think that is? That's that's an ultimate problem. That reminds you of watching them westerns, movies when they, you they would go to some small town and the one guy owns the uh, he owns the bar, he owns yeah. the tack place, yeah. he owns that. Yes, there's yeah. so many houses for sale in our neighborhood. I was going to go to town and say, are are these all, you know, can we find out? Are these just real people buying them, or is this like proxies? See, yeah. BlackRock proxies, yeah. Vanguard proxies. Are they buying all these homes so people can't own them and they're just going to rent them? Would you be excited if Trump did anything to rein in? Well, of course. It's just... Um, it's a monopoly that needs to be broken up. Just like, remember the uh, telephone company in the 80s, AT&T? Right. That was broken up. Yeah. And that's what needs to be done. Capitalism's not the problem. It's been corrupted to such a level, just like people think all the politicians are corrupt. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, we aren't represented enough as small business owners votes uh, some businessman. They're so close, practically edging socialists. 
my friend, these people will never have real class consciousness, okay? Maybe I'm too pessimistic. Maybe I'm too cynical. What these people could do at the end or, or used to do in the past was vote a certain way due to the, the social cohesion that they got from their labor unions. Now, ultimately, it doesn't even matter because, uh, you know, the Demo it's not like the Democratic Party is going to help them at all. I mean, this is a community of people that have also voted for the Democratic Party for the most part, and yet, what the fuck has the Democratic Party done for them? Okay? Also, shouts out to Austin Ox for this jacket. Thank you for the Teamster jacket. He got this for my birthday. I forgot to mention it. The AFL-CIO, New Jersey, local uh, 863. Teamster jacket, you know? Capitalism is corrupted. It's functioning exactly like it was designed. We're just in the late stage of it. Yeah, I mean, of course. Of course, it's not necessarily that... It, I mean, this is not corporatism. This is just capitalism. There's no such thing as, like, corporatism. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just capitalism. What you're describing is capitalism and more capitalism, as a matter of fact. But it's corrupted at the highest levels of these corporations, like you said, being owned. Instead of 200 of them, you're down to four. That's a massive control. You think somebody like uh, Trump with the billions and, and, and the business, I mean, he, we're talking about really large monopolies here. Mm -hmm. He's more in their peer group. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, You're right, he, right. He has a financial yeah. interest to do that kind of policy. So. I, I always even consider Trump even like a crony capitalist. He's not perfect, you know what I mean? He's He was a capitalist guy, you know, and... You know, you always, everybody always read where he would eminent domain against the take the lady, kick her out of her house for all that stuff. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's falls into that. Like I said, I don't know, you know, I come to a Trump rally. Um, doesn't mean I think he's the greatest guy. Can you really trust a billionaire? Help me understand why that's a thing for you. Yeah, so with billionaires, I would say honestly, no, you can't. Yeah. I'll say with Trump, when he debated Hillary Clinton in 2016, she said all these things about the tax laws, all this. And Trump said, where have you been for 30 years? You know, you haven't done anything about it. And then Where is Trump for the past four? Like, that's a great question. The follow-up to that is like, okay, well, what did Trump do? What did Trump do about the tax policies? What, what, what kind of tax policies do you, do you think uh, Trump implemented? And then he said, I know you're not going to do it because all your donors who... Because, like, he's right. And Trump was right. That was a powerful moment. But, like... The reality is Trump objectively made it worse. And I cannot, let me explain something to you. I am no fan of Hillary Clinton, but Donald Trump absolutely, without a doubt, without a shred of doubt in my fucking mind, delivered worse tax policy for America than Hillary Clinton would have. That is an objective fact. Okay? That is 100% the truth. Democrats are awful, they're feckless, they're cowards, and they oftentimes will not combat the, the uh, awful things that the Republican Party has done, right? But ultimately, they're, they're not going to crank the lever in the opposite direction in the same way that, with the same ferocity that like a Republican candidate will. That's at the basis of uh, harm reduction. She would have killed more brown children, though. No, man, come on. How are we still litigating this? This is insane. Like, yes, Hillary Clinton being president in 2016 would have absolutely been better for America in general than Donald Trump. This is like a ridiculous conversation to have. What, what are we talking about here? Like, Donald Trump was objectively horrifyingly bad. Okay? Any American president would be a war criminal regardless. The notion that the notion that, like, uh, uh, Donald Trump is, is less of a war criminal than Hillary Clinton is hilarious. Corporatism is a deflection tool used by economists to make excuses for the rapacious capitalist system. I hate how effective neoliberal propaganda is. Yeah. What's neoliberal propaganda? It's just the only thing you hear anyway. Yeah, you said even Bernie would. Yes, that is the truth. The just one more lane of politics, just one more capitalism. Ironic because the just one more lane is due to capitalist policies. Fund your campaign, benefit from the same tax breaks and tax laws I do. Right. So whether it's left or right, these yeah. people, they're not really going to change the tax laws from the donors that are funding their campaign. The, the power is so strong that these people have built up that, 
yeah. It's it's. I, and I don't have answers, and because I know that's what you want. You know, you want to hear what can we do? I can. I I just don't think politics is going to do it. I, just getting in like civil war thing is just. I, who wants to do that kind no. of stuff? You know what I mean? I'm kind of in the same place. I don't have the answers. Will politics do it? If politics doesn't do it, what else will? I look out at a couple hundred thousand workers at UPS recently. Yes. Uh, Did they, they vote on it yet? So Did they haven't pass? voted on it yet. I heard uh, about that. Came, it was negotiated, mm -hmm. and um, there was you know threat of the strike. They were really organized. They won thirty billion dollars over the term of that contract. Mm -hmm. You know, by being organized. So I look at something like that and, and say, if this is about control and about um, working class people having a seat at the table at a company as big as UPS, we just saw their unity win $30 billion worth of, you know, cash in the pocket. Does that sit well with folks? So Nonviolent direction, direct action does work. You know, we didn't hear all about the boycotts. You just mentioned 100,000 people. That's a lot of people. You don't want to mess with that. I feel like if you're saying these guys are edging on socialism, you're closer to conservatism than you think. Yeah, I'm not saying that they're edging on socialism at all. I'm saying that these guys are, these guys could not be further away. They, they, it's even worse because they recognize some of the awfulness and they recognize the problems. They recognize the pain that they experience. But what they fail to recognize is the adequate solutions. It just sucks. And of course, on the other side, make no mistake, it's not like if you ask liberals, like, they're closer uh, at all either. How is it worse? A conversation is actually possible here. See, they need someone to teach them. They don't know shit. I mean, I agree. But you have them for maybe 15 minutes, okay? Fox News has them for eight hours a day. Good luck. You understand what I'm saying? You get it? You have them for 15 minutes. You think their sons and daughters don't try to have these conversations with them? There are people in this chat that live in these areas. They talk to their fucking parents. They can't change their goddamn minds. What do you think it is? You think it's because they don't have a good argument? No. You think it's because the policies that they're uh, pushing for is bad? No. It's just don't infantilize all of them, though. No, for the most part, this is not even infantilizing. I understand where this comes from. I understand where uh, this mentality comes from. I understand how it's born and bred. It's bred out of uh, the the uh, diligently uh, ineffective, shitty, elitist attitude that the Democratic Party has and the disdain that they openly show uh, in media. It comes from all of the counter-propaganda cut against that kind of behavior. And it comes from uh, decades of, of reframing the conversation back to weird red herrings that have no bearing on their lives in, in reality, whether it be trans people existing or uh, gay people getting married and destroying the sanctity and safety of the church or, or Mexicans coming over the border. It's like, brother, you live in eerie Pennsylvania. You know what I mean? Like, you have nothing... Like, Mexicans coming over the border do not impact your life in a negative way regardless. You know what I mean? Maybe in Hazleton. Are Chad is trying to lecture you on deprogramming and leftist propaganda? Um, I finally got my coworker to agree with me on unions and the police. Then about a week later, he backtracked to a pro-police, anti-union stance. It's wild how Fox News is a hold on these people. Yeah, that's why I always say, like, listen... Debates are fun to watch. You know, maybe it makes you feel smart when your guy is winning the conversation. Maybe you get talking points that you can uh, throw out in a conversation with an interlocutor that is not ready for it. But ultimately, it combating, you know, eight to ten hours of like nonstop right-wing propaganda and... Uh, and and the only alternative to that eight to ten hours of nonstop right wing propaganda is like center right propaganda coming from liberal outlets. It's cooked.
Chad doesn't realize that he's completely aware of his material conditions, but it actually takes material change to change his mind. There's no debating these people. Every single second of his life is reinforced by oppressive constructs. This contract was $30 billion. That was from workers standing together. Didn't have anything to do with government. Is that something you guys support? Sure. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So if my coworkers wanted to make more, and, I, and since I want to make more, I'll probably organize something that could help make us more, like maybe a petition. Yeah, right. Or union activity, yes. a lot of that. Yeah. And would you be really excited by Trump coming out and supporting workers who are doing that? Yes. Seeing Trump on a picket line? Yes. Yeah. Hot button issues. You can't get away from them. <laughs> you never hear about you. Not today. No, I... Honestly like Bernie Sanders being angry was actually really good because people are angry, right? A lot of people are angry. And Bernie Sanders coming across like a curmudgeon was actually something that helped. Because when politicians adopt the opposite stance, when they, when they don't channel the frustrations and anger that people feel, um, then they come across like phonies. You know what I mean? Because... These guys are all angry every fucking day of their lives. And it's not just these people. It's most people. Bernie was never angry, man. Yes, he was. What are you talking about? How many articles did liberal outlets write about Bernie coming across like a curmudgeon is actually bad and how angry he is is actually bad and uh, he's like an angry male? The fuck are you talking about? Of course Bernie was angry. He was angry all the time. He was angry for the right things. Donald Trump also does a really good job of channeling that anger towards the usual outlets, the usual vectors. He's always blaming people, random people, uh, people that the Republican Party is conditioned to blaming about all of the problems of society. Even in like little moments, Trump still has uh, old Trump shines, right? When he's talking about Procter & Gamble, they probably make it for 10 cents and then they sell it they sell it for hundreds of dollars. It's like that right there, right? He's just like very openly, I mean, not that he's going to do anything about it, but he's very openly stating how uh, these guys are, uh, these guys are like upselling you. You know what I mean? They're selling you upmarked garbage, you know? My dad has referred to him legit as the angry Jew guy who has some good ideas. It's insane. I couldn't get behind Bernie. He has nothing to say to black people and actually supports policies that negatively impact black people. Yeah, black people hate, uh, you know, free health care, famously. Or maybe you've been conditioned into thinking that the only policies that impact black people in general are, are not policies that tackle the issue of poverty. Like, what the fuck? That chatter is insane. Look at the username. I just, I love relitigating 2016 era idiocy. No, the only thing that uh, Bernie, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Bernie Sanders uh, did not have enough riz in the older uh, black voter uh, demographics. It's true. Um, and the institutional Democrats have a stranglehold on this voting block. It's never going to happen. Let's be real. Okay? It's just not going to happen. Younger black voters love Bernie. Like, younger voters in general loved Bernie. But they didn't come out and vote in high enough numbers, regardless. Yeah, Bernie did not have enough riz with older black Democrats who are the most reliable voter block, both in the primaries and in the general as well. Yeah, it's definitely all black conservatives. What do you mean? No, not conservatives. Anyway, I didn't know that. So you told me. Why do you think that is? Well, they just made a big move doing that too. Because who runs? Who's running the show? Listen, we lost our we lost our republic decades ago. We're living in an oligarchy. So they're the ones calling the shots because that's where the money's come from. The media, everybody. You'll see things like the board or whatever they put on, you know, the TV. You'll have, We're trying to divide people. Yes. A lot of the stories are trying to divide exactly. people. Exactly. Divide, keep them off other. the ball. We're not, we're not supposed to be doing this. I'm yeah, like, we're, like it's, it's weird that it's that they, they wanna, weird. I feel like this is all for distraction, yeah. to be honest. 
Yeah, they want they want us to argue. It is. That's yeah, that, I mean, they want us to argue. It's a facade of, of yes. By or there's two sides when in reality there hasn't been two sides since the 1980s. These are just the conversations that we had at one Trump rally, but you saw it. It did not take long to find people who agree that politicians should reject the money from billionaires, should break up massive corporate monopolies, end forever wars, and join workers on the picket line. And you would never know that if you just watched Fox or CNN. So let's... I think the best takeaway from this video, which many videos like this have been done time and time again... Um, the best takeaway from this video is a constant. Uh, a constant fact, if you pay close attention to politics, you know this already, is the reality that progressive policies, especially fiscal policies, but even progressive social policies on a ballot that are not associated with a democratic politician are infinitely more popular than Democratic politicians themselves and Republican politicians themselves as well, obviously. That's why you see, uh, like, you know, felony, uh, Felon Voter Restoration Act passed by much larger margins than the governor in the state of Florida. You know what I mean? That's why you see weed legalization uh, all around the country. That's why every time there's another ballot measure or a referendum on issues such as abortion, for example, it brings out a tremendous number of people, even in a red state like Ohio, a now red state like Ohio. Okay? And what I mean by that is these people could be convinced to support aggressive economic policy positions it's just they're not gonna they're not gonna do it when uh, it's the rizless Democrats that are advocating for it. Think about how much I shit on Ron DeSantis. Part of the reason why I shit on Ron DeSantis all the time is because he reminds me of a Democrat. He behaves like a Democrat. No charisma. Uh, very bad uh, political instincts, and and just awful. Uh, just an awful retail politician in general. He just sticks out like a sore thumb. He sticks out like uh, a, a annoying liberal loser that's like disgusted by the people that he's talking to, right? It just reminds me so much of, of how Democrats operate in, in the field like that. Let's try a thought experiment. What would it look like if for this one presidential election, we had conversations like these that focused on the working class, what they demand, what they need, what they deserve? He's right about this. I mean, this part is actually true. It's uh, if, if politics was kept to uh, material realities, like issues that pertain to the working class, then yes, and if the Democratic Party genuinely did care about advancing uh, said policies, then yeah, they would they would probably do better. They would look better in general. Um, except neither party does that. They hyper focus on wedge issues. The Republicans control the narrative. They find a new way to uh, stink it up, and then the Democrats find different ways to flub it. And, and refuse to create adequate protective measures against it. And then every single conversation revolves around social issues.